Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Today I'm going to teach you how to ohm out the motor to find out where your coils are, or actually which wires go to which coils. As you can see, I've already got these two twisted and these two twisted. We'll start off by hooking one wire to one of the leads. This meter is set on ohms at 200 ohms. As you see right across here, I've got 98 ohms. These are the two ends of the uh, coil set. I check here, I've got 60 ohms. And when I check here, I've got 30 ohms. So in other words, from this, it runs into the coil and then comes out of center tap to here and then back into the coil and winds some more windings, comes out this one and then back in and does some more windings and comes out to here. These two wires here are the ends. This is the highest ohms. We're looking at 98 ohms, 99. From any of these wires over here, if I connect my red one to these, and I connect over to here, I've got no ohm. Notice on my right hand, I've got it across both of those wires. This coil set over here is not connected to any of these wires at all. Matter of fact, I only need these two on that first set of coils. I cut these off and put some epoxy on the end of these to keep these from shorting out. And I'll show you the ohms on this one. I've got 125, 127, somewhere around in that range. So this set of wires go into one set of coil, and this set of wires go into the ends of the other set of coils. They're the only ones we're worried about. That's how to ohm it out and figure out which uh, wires you're going to uh, use. These, these wires go to the inside coil, and these center taps are just for different speed. These wires here go to the outside coil. Anyway, the higher your ohms, the more voltage you're going to get out. But that means you're getting less amps, because voltage divided by resistance equals current. Okay, well, I'm going to cut these off. We're fixing to get into rectification. Show you how the diodes work, and how they turn AC, which is these wires, alternating current, into direct current. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. I'm going to explain to you two theories. One is electron theory, one is hole theory. Electrons are negatively charged. Holes are positively charged. Holes are the absence of an electron. A positive charge means it needs electrons. Electrons are attracted to the holes. Thus, in theory, the holes are attracted to electrons. Electrons are the real theory. But people ground their car and they call this zero, and because they like thinking in positive, uh, they think in conventional or whole theory. So I'm going to explain this in whole theory for you. These lines right here and these arrows are whole theory, not electron theory. When you're charging a battery, you're supplying electrons to the negative side. When you turn on your radio in your car, you're pulling electrons from the grounded side and they're leaving out the positive side, that red wire. We'll go back to conventional theory for you. So anyway, current wants to flow this way. Conventional. These are holes going this way, not electrons. All right, so the holes try to try to go through this way. They can't go through this diode. They have to go through this diode because this is a valve and they go this way. So the positive side of your battery is being charged with holes. In reality, the electrons are being sucked from it and going this way, the direction of this yellow arrow. If your holes are being pulled from this wire here and going through and coming out here, then it's pulling holes from over here and taking a path like this. When we come down here and the current wants to flow the other direction, we're saying the holes are going in a circle this way and you need a full connection, all right? They can't go this way, they have to go this way, which means the electrons are going that way. Okay, and still, like I said, we're going this way. Well, the holes have got to be pulled from somewhere. They get pulled from here, and they go all the way around and come out here. And eventually, from here to here, going to the battery, these make a full circuit. So that's how that works. Now, if I was going to explain this in electron theory, I'd say the electrons are trying to go this way, they get blocked by this one and wind up having to go this way. Well, seeing as the electrons are being pulled this way and supplied to the battery, they have to come from somewhere. So way back over here, the electrons are coming from this positive side of the battery all the way around 
and over to the negative side of the battery so that they can be used again and redistributed. Now you know the difference between electron theory and conventional yeah. hole. Theory. Down here, you'll notice I've got AC and AC. This represents one of the coils in our alternator. This represents the other coil in our alternator. One wire comes all the way over here to this diode bridge rectifier. The other side of it goes over here to this end of the diode bridge rectifier. And this coil here governs this. Now, this is the negative side. This is the positive side. We're going to put, even though we already know how this works, and we already know how this works, it operates the same, what we're going to do is take these and we're going to treat these diode bridges like batteries. Now, if, let's say this is 15 volts and this one's 15 volts. Well, we're going to wind up at 30 volts because we're putting them in series. And the only thing is, we're only going to get a certain amount of current out of this because it's just like putting flashlight batteries in series. You're still going to have the same amount of current that you do out of one battery. But, if you do it like this, here's your AC source powering this one. Here's your AC source powering this one. This is AC. These two are not connected here. They're just very close. <laughs> anyway, AC flows around in this one, make generating a current going this way. And the same thing up here. This is like putting two batteries side by side. The positive is here, the positive is here, the negative is here, and the negative is here. Which means we're going to wind up with the, the same voltage, which if I called this 15 volts and this one was 15 volts, I'd still have 15 volts out. This would be negative, and this would be your positive 15 volts. We take this positive 15 volts, and we put it to the positive side of a battery. And the negative side, we're going to put over to the negative side of the battery. And if this voltage tries to go any higher, this battery is going to drag it back down to its voltage because it's going to start conducting and sucking the juice off it and taking the charge. The higher the voltage, the more this battery draws off it and takes it right back down to voltage. Well, in that kind of a system, you might want to put another battery right beside it. This is called parallel, same as we're doing here, parallel. Now, this is going to, if this uh, diode bridge here can only deliver so many amps, putting another one right beside it, even though our voltage is going to remain the same, we're going to wind up with double the amperage. Amperage is like, uh, is called current. It's like so many gallons per minute of water. That's your current. Voltage is more like pressure. If you put pressure on a system and so you put pressure in a balloon, you poke a small little hole and the balloon doesn't pop and it just puts out a little stream like a squirt gun. Okay, well that, the pressure inside that balloon is going to make that squirt just so far. It has the power or the pressure to make it squirt so far. Now if you have a water hose with a wider orifice because it's that big around, and you have the same pressure, it's going to squirt the same distance. But what the difference is, is you have less resistance and as you have a bigger hose or a bigger hole or orifice. You have less resistance, that means now you have more current. Putting these two batteries in parallel, this is voltage, remember, pressure. These are under the same pressure, or the potential difference as they call it, or voltage. The current that it can be stored in this one and the current that can be stored in this one if I decide to draw off this 12 volts I can get more current because it's more available it's less resistance coming out now on our turbines we're gonna wind up with a lot more than 15 volts here and a lot more than 15 volts here so we're gonna put our diode bridges in parallel and we're going to take them out to a system where we put our batteries in series. We only have so much amperage available to us. We got plenty of voltage and we need more current. Well, we're going to wind up with the same amount of current going through our batteries being in series. But the voltage is higher. Voltage times current equals power. If you want to absorb all the power, then we're putting a few batteries in series like this. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies.